Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought I would step things up a little bit here and take a look at another cool lesson in our Learning the Marquee Title Tool, sort of branch off of our Learning Media Composer and Symphony tutorial series. And we're actually going to scratch the surface on a few other techniques that we haven't quite talked about yet inside of Marquee. But once you see how simple these are to start working with, we'll actually get to the advanced portion of that in a later lesson. And I'm talking about lighting and texturing. And as you can see in front of you, I've created this really cool animation for the Disco Channel. Now, any relationship with the Disco Channel and any other channel that happens to be out there right now is purely coincidental. What's important to know about this animation that you see in front of you is that it was all created inside of the Marquee Title Tool. No other application was used, all just with a little bit of brain power and a fantastic titling application. Now, like I said, we scratched the surface on a couple of techniques that we haven't really gotten into, one of which is lighting, the other which is texturing. But when you see how simple they are to work with inside a Marquee, just on the basics, I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna jump in and sort of learn more yourself. And we're gonna get more into detail with them, like I said, in later lessons. Okay, I want to keep this introduction short because I want to get right into Symphony and show you how simple it is to create this very cool animation. Okay, let's Alt Tab into Avid's Symphony. Obviously a Command and Tab for all of my Mac friends out there. I'm just going to double click on my bin here. Of course, we'll call this bin Graphics. And let's get into Marquee. I'm just going to come down to New Title. Of course, I'm going to be prompted as to what title tool I want to use. I want to use the Marquee tool. We're just going to adjust our window here. Let's just come up to view. We'll show all the toolbars and I'm just going to turn on my saves and let's type in our text. Of course, we're just going to type in disco channel. And the font that I decided to use is impact. No, just kidding, not impact. I use impact too much. And in this case, I needed a font that had a nice round O. And I know the perfect font for that is Gil Sands. And that's looking very nice, just like such. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to increase the size of Disco because that needs to be nice and big and pretty much stretch the length of the screen. Then what we're going to do is just adjust the spacing in between channel to stretch it out a little bit here. So let's just increase the size of Disco. Even, you know, that's pretty good right there. I think that's probably big enough. And what I need to do first is I need to adjust the letting between channel and Disco. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt on Windows Option on the Mac. I'm going to use the up and down arrow keys to adjust the letting. What we're going to do is just space our text out just like about like such. I think that's pretty good. And at the end of the day, I really don't need that O. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to remove it because we know that the earth is going to go right there in its place. So that's looking pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to get the earth in here so that we can position that where we're going to want to have it go, which is right beside the C. So what I'm going to do is just say file. I'm going to say import and I'm going to say image. And I have the texture map of the earth that I downloaded uh, off the internet here. I'm just going to say open. There it is. And you'll see that if I zoom back by hitting control and minus, command and minus, obviously for all my Mac friends out there, you'll see it's just an image that was brought in. I can resize it to, you know, whatever size I want to resize it to. And what we're going to do now is with that earth selected, the earth picture, I'm going to navigate up to object and I'm going to write down here at the bottom, select create DVE. Now, as soon as I do, you'll see a duplication has been made and I now have an image of the earth that's the same size as my frame. The problem is it's not that sphere that you saw in the introduction. So how do we get that sphere? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate up to window. We're going to come down to properties. We're going to come down to, of course, DVE. You'll see the very first thing inside of DVE is effect. What is the effect you want to do? Well, you'll see I have three options. I have page curl, ripple, and what we want, sphere. Now, you'll see as soon as I select sphere, I now actually have the earth in a three-dimensional sphere. Now, I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but what I'm going to do is come back down to properties. I'm going to come to transform. I'm just going to grab the Y value here and just spin this earth, and you'll see this really is 3D. Very, very cool. So what I'm going to do is just undo that just to put things back where they were when I created the sphere. And we're just going to scale this down. I think I'm going to put the scale at about 40%. But what's important to keep in mind is I'm going to go 40 and 40. But now if I rotate this, if I don't adjust the Z, you'll see everything's all stretched out, not the way that we want it. So what I'm going to do is just put in a value of 40 as well. And let's position the Earth right about where we're going to want it to go, right about there. And the problem is it's snapping to that border, and that's a little bit 
too far over. I think that's looking pretty good right there. Okay, so I've got one element that's in 3D. I have the Earth in 3D right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make everything else in 3D here. So let's come back up to Window. We're going to come down to Properties again. And we want to, as you'll remember from a previous Marquee tutorial, we're going to want to navigate to Effect. And what I want to do is just extrude this element. So let's extrude it out. Maybe we'll just, I think we'll put it at about, I don't know, 40 maybe. And what we need to do to be able to actually see what's going on with our extrusion, you'll see that we can see it, but we don't have any detail, is that we want to enable lighting. You'll see as soon as I do, we now get a very nice uh, looking Discovery Channel word mark or disco channel. Pardon me, not Discovery Channel, because that we're not doing the Discovery Channel. We're doing the disco channel here. And uh, to get in here and actually see what's going on with this light, what we're going to do is we're just going to navigate over here to the toolbar on the left, and I'm going to select the light, and you'll see that I can take the light and position it wherever I want it to go. Now, the only thing that's going on here is that you'll see that the light is only impacting this text, and it's not actually doing anything to the globe, and we actually want it to. And much like with the disco channel, with the globe, what we're going to do is we're going to enable lighting. You'll see as soon as we do now, this light is going to impact the globe as well. Now, I think what I'm going to do before that is I'm just going to turn that off because I want to animate the Earth first. So let's do that. First thing I'm going to do before I animate is come up to File. I'm going to come down to Duration, and we'll set the duration at about 15 seconds. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to say OK, and let's just close our Effects window here. And what we want to do is turn on animation mode. And of course, I need to come back up to window, come down to properties, come to transform, because what we're going to want to do is over the span of 15 seconds, we're going to want to get in and we're going to want to animate the earth spinning. So what I'm going to do is just adjust it a little bit here and then we'll put it back at zero. And then we're going to come right down to the end of our timeline and we're going to just rotate this. Now I'm not sure if this is actually the way that the earth turns, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, but I'm sure someone will correct me. Okay, so what do I have now once I turn animation mode off? I now have the Earth spinning in three dimensions inside a marquee. Okay, so we've, we've handled that. Now what I want to do is I want to reposition these lights to get them to, you know, sort of impact the disco channel and the Earth equally. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to again, let's actually select the earth first and make it accept lights. There we go. And the thing that's going on with these lights that's hard to see in the scene view is that the light is not actually positioned where we want it to. But what we want to do first is I'm going to create another light. And I'm going to do that by simply right clicking and saying add light. I'm going to position it over here roughly by the earth. But you'll see now that everything's really blown out. So let's take a look at what exactly is going on. I'm going to come to view. I'm going to come down to views and I'm going to say, well, show me the layer from the top. I'm going to zoom back a little bit and you can see here are our lights. And you'll see that as I adjust the light, you can see where exactly it's pointing. And let's just make sure I'm just going to right click. The light type is, of course, local, which is good, which is what we want. And it's local. Perfect. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to move things back a little bit. And how we're going to adjust this once I come up to view and I come back down to views and say, show me the scene is, of course, with the light property. And you'll see that with the light selected, I can actually come in. And I think what I'm going to do is make the intensity of this side about 40. That's looking much better. And then with this light, we can even position it kind of over here, because I don't even mind if I get a little bit of the gleam here. You know, maybe that's off the atmosphere. And of course, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see things better. And with this light over here, we could even maybe increase it just a little bit. That's looking pretty good. Now, how did I get in and create that animation of the light sort of coming on? Well, I created that animation just the same as I would create anything else. What I'm going to do is come right back to the beginning again. I'm going to come up to my animation mode here. And with the first light over here selected, we're going to take its intensity. Now, we're going to remember that it's at 40, but we're going to drag it way down here kind of like that. And I really like the way that we now have this light being cast on one side of the earth and the other side of the earth is dark. What I'm going to do is with it at minus 45, we're just going to move down to maybe about, I don't know, five seconds. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the value back up at 40. And what we're going to do, of course, is turn animation mode off. And now you'll see if I come back, everything just animates on. I'll just hit play here. Look at that. It's playing pretty close to real time inside of marquee in HD with extruded 3D and a 3D sphere rotating. So I'd say that that's actually pretty impressive. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with the way that this looks now. So of course, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to File, 
and I'm going to say save all to bin. Now, of course, you'll remember from previous tutorials, what's actually happening now is that an image sequence is being made right now out of Marquee. Now, remember, I could render this out of Marquee, and I could send it to After Effects, I could send it to, you know, Motion, I could send it wherever I want to send it if I wanted to. But in this case, we're just going to be using this inside of our Media Composer timeline. Now, what's really cool about this is not just the fact that it played back in real time in Marquee, but once this element gets saved out into Media Composer and Symphony, of course, it is going to be real time in my timeline. I'm just going to call it Untitled 1, which is fine. And of course, we're going to go through the process of exporting the TIFF sequence, and it's going to export an alpha, because remember, this, again, is technically a title, and it can be keyed over top of any type of footage that we want it to be keyed over top of. So you'll see it's creating the alpha media from the TIFF sequence. And this is all being done very fast. The render was very fast. The export to Media Composer Symphony was all very fast. Again, very fast for 3D extruded text with an actual sphere inside a marquee rotating around for 15 seconds. I'd say that that's pretty impressive. And it was fairly easy to create as well. Okay, so our import's almost done. And once it's done, it's going to appear over here, of course, inside of the graphics bin. We'll just give it another, oh, I don't know, four or five seconds here. And I'll take your watches out. I can hear them all ticking there. And in just a second, I'm going to throw this into the preview window and drop it into a timeline to show you how this works. Here we go. So it's done. There it is right there. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to hit B to edit it into my timeline. It's going to increase the quality here to be full. I'm going to come back to the beginning of the timeline and, of course, hit play. And again, real time, 3D extruded text with a 3D sphere rotating around, all created inside the marquee title tool very very cool and of course if i wanted this to fade up and fade down all i have to do is use my shortcut for fade effect which is f12 on your keyboard you'll see it's going to say well hold on what do you want the fade up to be maybe we'll make the fade up i don't know maybe we'll just make it 20 and 20. maybe we'll make it 20 and 10 actually that's probably a bit better i'll say okay now let's come back to the beginning now i'm going to hit play there it is fading up with the light coming up on our disco channel and of course once we get to the end it's going to fade out. Now, I hope in this lesson you've seen, again, the power of the Marquee Title Tool creating not only 3D extruded text, but creating real 3D shapes right from within Marquee, animate them, play them in real time in Marquee, then render them out to playback in real time and be keyable in your timeline so you can drop it over whatever type of background you happen to need it for. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.